Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video we're going to be doing a poppy in ink and watercolour and I just wanted to firstly talk through the drawing in pencil and then I'm going to pop some ink on top of that. So those of you that watched Monday's video might recall that I was talking about drawing ellipses and in relation to drawing cylinders, uh, I was doing a plant pot and things like wine glasses and that, but it's also very good for drawing flowers, as flowers that are a circular shape overall. So when I'm drawing flowers, rather than setting off drawing each individual petal to begin with, I draw the whole shape of the flower and then fit everything into that. So to begin with, with this poppy, I'm going to draw one nice big ellipse for the top of the poppy. Again, keep your arm moving nice and loose, work from your shoulder and have a nice big ellipse shape. Use plenty of your paper. And then, we, although we can't see the bottom of the poppy because the, the petals are in the way, it is a cup shape that we're doing. It's not a flat open shape like that, it's made forming a cup, so there is a bottom in there. So think about where that bottom is, here, and draw another ellipse. And that's going to help you think about the way that the petals are coming up around that cup. Now poppies are very distinct, they have a little seed pod in the centre, so again by drawing this here we know where the stem is actually attached and we can put that in to begin with. And you might want to do your poppy facing the other way, you might want to make it straight up and you might want to have your stem going in a different direction, it doesn't really matter. And the thing about this technique is once you know how to do it, you can have some facing in different directions and some facing forwards etc. So where the stem is attached underneath, and of course we're not going to be able to see this, this is going to be behind, because we've got the components of the flower right there, even though we can't see them, it's going to help make that shape. So we know that this seed pod is attached to the top of that stem, even though we can't see that stem, because that will be erased later. And again, that's a circular shape, so we can do another little ellipse there for the top of that seed pod and then some lines around that and then it has quite an intricate shape on the top which we can put in more with the pen and again it has some more little bits of black seedy bits around that okay so once we've got the overall positioning of everything in there then we can start and put the petals in so with this one on this side it's we're not going to be seeing this stem we're going to see a little bit of the petal curling over here and then the underside of it here. So all this, I'll do it now for you actually, once you raise him, everything inside that petal, and there you can see that petal emerge. So that's going to be coming up and around this way. Underneath there, we're going to have some petals that are sort of coming out a little bit more, and going around to the outside of this shape and the same on the other side. So this here is um, a guideline, it doesn't mean you can't go outside of that with some of your petals. You're going to see the stem there, but not there where that petal is. Okay, so if that one finishes there, we're going to have another petal. We'll start with the, back, the ones that are on the inside of the flower first before we get too complicated. So this is where this line comes in handy because you just want to follow that all the way around and back in and aim it down towards here because that's where it's attached. And the same on the other side. Think about where it's attached. It's attached there to the top of the stem, making that nice cup shape going out and back in and down to where it was attached. Now different varieties of poppies have different amounts of petals and things but it's just getting that overall shape there. Actually I'm going to make this one come a lot nearer to this one. And then at this point again get your eraser, get rid of some of those earlier lines. I hope that's making sense to you. So those first lines that we did were just really to, you know, put something into work to. And here the, the petal behind may be a little bit lower because it's perhaps flopping out a little bit. So then we can get rid of this here and that makes a nice shape between the petals there. 
and then we want another one coming out this side maybe a bit more character to it and actually I will put that in front of that stem there so we'll get rid of that stem and all of those guidelines in there and we can tidy this up a bit more once we've got the ink in so if this one's coming round to here it's then curving over and again this is where everything attaches so although we can't see it that's behind the flower and that's behind what we're seeing that's where the top of the stem comes to and it's also where the petals are coming to so when you're drawing your lines draw everything back in that direction and that's that one going down there so then we want to finish off this one and we'll have it coming in a little bit there I think make it a bit more of a an interesting shape rather than just a circle because the petals aren't perfect again with this one let's make it a bit more shaped there and the nice thing about poppers is they have lines these lines in them so you can have the lines again going down towards that central point to make that shape of the cup there okay so that would be enough actual drawing in the pencil and then we'll come along and put the pen on top of that now the pen that I'm using is a not size 0.5 I mean the only thing that you need to be really careful of is that it's waterproof because you're going to be putting watercolour paints over the top so whichever drawing pen you have that's absolutely fine but for something as delicate as a poppy you don't want too heavy a line you want quite a nice fine point and what I tend to do when I'm doing my drawings in ink after I've done those pencil guidelines is be a little bit more expressive with the pen than you were with the pencil with the pencil you were making sure things were in the right position now you can be have a little bit more fun and put some more um, little nicks and things in the petals and things like that that are going to give it a bit more character because when you draw in nature it's never going to be perfect there's always going to be little curls and twists and nicks okay so I'll set off just with a very simple line here for that back petal and then we'll come up with this one and I'll, like I say, give it one or two little bits of kinks and twirls. Take some of those lines down. But because that's pencils there, you don't need to worry too much about getting the accuracy of the shape because that's already there. So that's much nicer than just following that pencil round, line round. And again, we could put some little lines coming down and from here going out so if you start your hand there where the center of the flower is and then go up that's going to be much more convincing to forgetting that little cup shape don't overdo it at this stage with your ink because it's a delicate flower we don't want it to be covered in too much black ink now I'm standing to do this so it's easier for me to get this line around here but normally I would perhaps turn that around to get a better line um, I just want to don't want to be in the way of the camera too much but you know don't be afraid to move your paper around so that you can get some better shapes and get a smoother line than I have there again imagine your hands just you know, the nib of your pen starting here behind where we can't see and then take it up so that you get in that shape where it's all joined together in the bottom of that flower and of course this doesn't just apply to poppies this can apply to all sorts of flowers that have got that round cup shape so this uh, petal here is a little bit more complicated because it's actually in front of us, coming towards us. But still try and make, give it a bit more character. And get that dome shape at the bottom again where it's connected up. And again it's curving around. Make it feel like it's all coming around. This one's going over because it's at the back of the flower and it's more open than these ones that are in the centre of the flower but again you still want those lines coming from that central point out to this one so don't be afraid to like leave little bits of gaps little nooks and nicks whatever you want to call them I don't know if those words are made up but there you go and again from here come out and down to give that feeling so we'll have a look at this central part now 
I wouldn't know what sort of shape you want to call that really um, and it's got these little I don't know what you would call them it's where the seeds are forming on the top here going in and out again can you see how I'm letting my pen sort of wobble on the paper and I'm not putting too much pressure on the pen and I'm sort of letting it do its own thing I've not got that much control of it loosening my hand and letting those lines wiggle out to give much freer shape to that and again one or two coming down at this stage if you wanted you could go much heavier with your black in the centre there because some poppies are very black in the centre um, it really depends how much you want to do with the ink and how much you want to leave to do with the paint but it is nice and dark in the centre there and that's you know what makes that contrast with the red of the petals and the very dark blacks that you get in the centre there but I think I'm going to actually I might just shade a little bit behind that shape but other than that I think I'm going to leave it like that and get the rest of the colour in with the paint and after that the only thing left to do is this stem and then we can just leave it to dry a few seconds before we take away some of those lines actually I'm just going to pop a line in that one there okay so let, do let it dry for a few seconds don't just rub it straight away with your eraser because you may smudge it You'll notice that your flower looks completely different once you've got rid of all those pencil lines. A much freer drawing, um, you know, you've got rid of that very straight line and got these little jaggedy edges like I was saying before and it's got much more character than it had just with those pencil lines. So at this point if you want to you could take a nice photograph of your work because then you can come back later, pop it on the computer or something and use different colours on it and try it again um, if you wanted to preserve this at this stage if you're happy with your drawing. So I've mixed up one colour only in my palette and this is French Ver Vermilion by Sennelier and as you can see it's a lovely poppy colour. Poppy red tends to be, again we've got lots of different varieties of poppies but it does tend to be on the more orange side of red than it does on the blue side. So I'm going to just do one petal at a time just with this colour, just painting it no pre-wetting of the paper just using a nice smallish brush actually so I can get those little shapes in that we did earlier and I'll go ahead and fill the whole thing in but just watch how I'm bringing the brush down in the direction of those lines that we talked about before so we know everything's connected here so our arm and our hand and our brush are all moving in that direction as we go along. You might need to alter that if it's an awkward position, particularly as I'm trying to work around the camera. But I'll go ahead now and do the rest of these petals.
Whilst the poppy was drying I made up a second colour of some green and this is a phalo green light with a little bit of that red popped into it just to knock it back a little bit uh, and I'm now going to do the seed pod and the stem, stem in the same colour. I didn't want to introduce too many colours into this painting by just keeping a few colours it makes a nice simple harmonious little painting. And again this is from the Sennelier set which is a travel set that I've used in one or two of my videos and of course that's a French brand um, and as we're thinking of Flanders quite apt so it's quite an illustrative drawing painting nothing too complicated keeping it all nice and simple and again we'll leave that green to dry there. The third colour I've made up is some, let me think, some Payne's Grey and again I've added some of the French Vermilion into that to make quite a warm colour really rather than just using a black. And we'll pop these little shapes into the top here just filling all that in really because we've already got the lines there with the pen and once that's dry we may come over the top with another layer just to add some definition. So you need quite a small brush for this, you don't want to be fiddling around with big brushes going over the lines here. Just have a look for you to see what size it is, it's size 3 this one. Obviously it depends on how big you paint and draw your poppy in the first place. And just make sure that that green is nice and dry before you start adding your next colour. You can always use the hair dryer if you want to speed it up a little bit. Now as well as having the black in the centre there, some poppies have little bits of black on the petals and actually on this one I'm just going to put a little bit of that darker colour coming up from behind because of course petals are transparent and you can see through them and so some of those lines are going to show and you just pop that over the top of the red and again we've got that red in that colour so it's all going to blend in quite nicely just occasionally poppies have these you know the, the black colouring going around them and I think that's probably enough for that so what we're going to do now is where it's red we want some shadows so we'll mix some of that red and we'll just pop into that a tiny bit of green um, to make that a little bit darker for some shadows. So this shadow colour here is a little bit thicker than the original mix of red and these two are the same two colours mixed together only this one's got more green and this one's got more red. That way the whole thing is going to combine nicely together. Red and green are opposite each other on the colour wheel so it makes a nice shadow adding that little bit of green to the original colour. And we're not going to do, overdo it with our shadows but of course because this petal's underneath this one it may be a little bit darker under here and it's all nice and dry under there and I'm leaving these hard edges I'm not softening anything off today you, you'll quite often see me coming along softening some edges I'm just going to leave it a bit more illustrative and I'm going to go in the back here with a shadow just curve it over in the direction of the petal. That's enough for that one. Here it's casting a shadow on itself because this part of the flower here is on the top so this is going to be darker under here. And again follow that shape around that we were drawing earlier where we were thinking about it all coming from that stem. You can go on top of some of that black that you've already got there, leave some little areas of lighter colour. And have it darker under here where it's not going to get the same amount of light. And then again this petal here is underneath those central petals so that might have shadow as well a 
again coming over in that shape that we've already got. And in the central ones here it's just to make that shape of it going out and where those lines are because it's sort of the lines the petals will be dimpled in a little bit if you like if that makes sense and they'll cast shadows on themselves so you see how lightly I'm holding the brush and how I'm just flicking that brush up not putting lots of pressure on it you're obviously going to have more shadow down at the base in the cup centre of the cup and as you come up towards the outside edges you're going to have a lot less shadow because the light's going to be catching on there and this back petal if we just sort of fill more or less all of that in with shadow apart from the very top it's going to sort of differentiate it a bit more than from the two petals there okay now I'm going to go back to that dark colour so just exactly the same colour as before and just one or two areas I'm going to make it extra dark so it's a bit you know not all just uniform and two little lines some lines up here how much detail you put in of course is up to you and with the green that we had earlier I'm just going to come over the top and again put one or two of those lines in to emphasize that shape and then if we go all the way down one side of the stem just with the same color only a bit darker because we've got two layers it's just going to give that stem a bit more shape and again I'm going to just leave it to dry for a little moment and to complete the little picture I've got some of the lemon yellow nice and strong and I'm going to just put that where the Sun is going to be catching the most and of course these petals are transparent so they are going to catch the Sun and the light is going to shine through them so it's going to catch there on the edge of, of this one the top ones maybe a little bit here and it's just a lovely lovely colour is this yellow I'll just put a tiny bit there where that's bending over you don't have to do this but I do feel it just lifts it all up a little bit and gives it a nice bit of a shine And again it might catch a little bit of sun on the stem which is just going to make it a bit more interesting and it'd be nice to pop a bit in here as well and can you see how that's just added to it a little bit made it a bit brighter okay so I hope you've enjoyed that um, little drawing demonstration of how to do a poppy so again if you have didn't see that first video that I did on ellipses earlier in the week if you want to have a look at that I'll link that up here but it's a really handy technique to have for drawing round shaped flowers get your circle in there first and then work into it with your, the shapes of your petals and things and it gives you a framework to work to and then you're not worrying so much about having your um, the whole shape correct so if, with anything that you're doing if you're doing a still life or even an outside doing a landscape get the main blocks of shape in first before you start putting that detail in break things down into blocks and shapes even if it's you drawing a person or something just look and see if you can see some shapes popping out at you that you can get in there first okay so let me know how you get on with that drawing if you want to have a go at that like I say you can alter the shape of your ellipses the size and the way they're facing so that you could get a whole field of poppies if you wanted to I'm not going to put a background in this that was just what I wanted to do a very simple poppy in the run-up to Remembrance Day okay so I hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching and I'll be back again with you next week with more tutorials and demonstrations in the meantime enjoy your painting and drawing and bye for now